Alright, hey guys, Trin here with uh, part two of the random generation loot tutorials. Um, today we're going to start with uh, the chest and the chest widget that goes along with it. Um, so from part one, in preparation, you should have a chest uh, blueprint and uh, a few other things, but the chest blueprint is what we're going to be using today as well as we're going to be creating a, a widget to go with it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, right click on you know wherever you want to put it and create your widget. Um, I called mine treasure chest widget because that's what it's going to be. Um, and then we're going to open that up. And um, so this is essentially just a label for for your you know for your chest and um, so you can kind of set it up however you want I put a border I put a button and I put a chest uh, the main thing to remember is that um, you want the when you set this up this is um, I'm going to kind of like go over just a few things here um, this part's really not that important but you can do this uh, you want it you know you want to do this for sure but um, but it doesn't really matter how it's decorated and whatever um, but you do need to make sure that when you um, set up the widget that the the root um, I you know you remove the canvas you set up a root or you have the root there which is the treasure chest widget and you just set that to um, hidden it doesn't really matter if it's hidden but we're gonna do f hidden for now so uh, make sure that you click that to hidden if you do a border um, just make sure that the border is um, set to visible and actually because it doesn't really matter the buttons gonna be on top of it so you're gonna do a button that's the main thing is we have to have a button so um, you can do a border you can do a button there the button needs to be visible but if you put text inside of that button you want the text to be hit test invisible so make sure that you set anything that's gonna be on top of the button to hit test invisible we don't want to be clicking on that and not be able to access the button underneath it so um, if you have once you get those three things kind of in order uh, and you have a widget that's ready to go um, we're gonna move over to the graph section and start setting up the blueprints for it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now if you have any questions about how to set up your widget and whatever like decorating it um, I binded like if you want to know I, I, I put a bind on um, my brush color for my border uh, and I put a bind on the background it really doesn't matter if you do these things I just did that because um, I wanted something specific so my brush just sets the colors um, if it's it's supposed to set the colors on hover and it did work but my my uh, uh, border right now is I think it's invisible no no I just set it to black so it's like it's it's kinda just like it's not really doing anything right now so this stuff's kinda just whatever um, but when you do open your graph your first graph um, this is what we're gonna be starting with the event graph here so um, so let's move on to this part here so the first thing you'll need to do is uh, make sure that you have um, your button and you check it as a variable so make sure that this is checked to variable and then we're gonna go back into the graph and that'll show up right here as a button and it's editable and stuff so um, now we can actually access it and do things with it whenever we want to um, so the first thing is you need to set up the alignment and I'm not gonna like I'm doing this kind of the way that because it's already a setup I'm just not gonna like reset it up um, but you'll wanna pull off of your construction event and you will wanna do um, set alignment in viewport and you just wanna put 0.5 and 0.5 on that that's all that you do for the construction event um, reality is this isn't gonna do much this is just gonna set it once and then there's actually a tick that that re, like really keeps track of where the widget is um, and it's not even actually being handled inside the widget it's actually being handled by the by the item itself by the the uh, actor like the um, 
the tool the tool chest um like actor or not the tool chest why do i keep saying tool chest the um treasure chest treasure chest actor is what keeps track of of like and aligns the actual widget um because i was having a lot of problems with trying to set the widgets like location within itself like off of the tick right here and it was it was just basically not working it wouldn't update it wouldn't do anything so um um so basically i set it in the i set it up on the on the uh the treasure chest so we'll get to that later though um so you, now that we have the button you want to make sure that you uh click on the button and down here underneath this you're going to want to click uh on click there's going to be a plus on yours so you'll click that button it'll add this to the thing most of you people probably already know this stuff um, you can click on this and you can drag that out and you're gonna wanna set up a branch and the branch the first branch is gonna be so that we can check and get the result get the hit result under the cursor so you'll put a get player controller you drag out from there and get hit result under the cursor uh, by visibility and um, you can you can actually add other trace channels if you want to so that you can like set it up to be uh, more precise like if you only want it to be able to find uh, like a specific trace then you can do that too um, but right now I'm just using visible um, and then you're gonna break the hit result and you're gonna get the location and you're gonna check uh, get the return value and check check that and then um, if that's true if you did hit something basically um, then you're gonna wanna go to a simple move to location so that's what the location gets dragged into the simple move to location um, that's nothing special that's just a you know you can simple move to location right there and um, and so once that's all set up that's basically just going to move your character over to the chest right when you click on the chest um, or sorry when you click on the tool tip like the little chest tool tip it's going to take you over to the chest um, sometimes it doesn't work right and it's because I think that has to do with like trace channeling and and also the uh, the fact that the when I was talking about earlier uh, having visibility settings and stuff in here if you if you set these incorrectly you're not going to be able to click on that button and have it go to there because if you if you don't have access to the button if your chest text here is like visible you'll be clicking on the text and it will not it will not be triggering that button because the, the text is on top of it and if you have it set to visible um, it's just it's going to be blocking the button so you got to make sure that's set up and um, and sometimes it'll still mess up so like it's just a I think it's like there's probably a better way to make sure that it's set, set up right and using like proper trace channels and stuff that way it's not like getting inter any interference from anything else that you could possibly have your mouse next to you at the time um, but for now like this is just a simple way to set it up it does work um, and so we're gonna just kinda go with that and then um, so after you've gotten the thing where okay you've clicked on a button that the button that is on the widget right we're moving to the location um, the first thing we want to do is we want to make um, we want to make a branch that checks to see if we're in range of the treasure chest um, so in order to do that you want to make a reference by going in here clicking on this adding a new variable and then saying uh, treasure chest the name of your treasure chest so mine is um, I think I used the treasure chest master right here so if you you have a different name then you want to pick that name and then you want to go with a reference and it's gonna and then you can name the variable or whatever that's what this is here um, it's a treasure chest uh, it's a treasure chest master uh, reference so I'm gonna get rid of the new one that I made there so you'll take that control and click and drag it out there and then you'll pull off of that and um, I should have probably already set up the treasure chest with all the booleans and stuff so because we're at that point I was thinking that I forgot we have to actually have booleans inside this so um, what I might do 
is just have you transfer over to the treasure chest. So what we're going to do right now is pull the treasure chest uh, actor open, right? Go here, get your treasure chest actor and pull it open. And we're going to just make a couple booleans. So we're going to do, we're going to make, make sure that your treasure chest has a looted boolean. Um, and you're going to leave that to false. Uh, you're going to make sure it has an in-range boolean. And you're going to leave that one to false. Um, and then a chest clicked boolean. That one's also going to be false. And then a tooltip visible boolean. And the tooltip visible boolean you want to um, actually check initially it wants to be true. So just make sure that you have those four booleans set up before you continue. And um, on your treasure chest here. The other stuff here we can do later because we're not actually... This is This is all done and used inside the treasure chest um, so it's, it's not something that we're gonna have to have in the widget uh, it was just the booleans we wanted to get access to so once you've got those four booleans in you've set them up then uh, we can go back over to the treasure chest widget again and now you should have access when you when you have when you got uh, when you have your uh, reference here you should be able to go in there and say well I want the looted boolean or whatever you want so now um, you're gonna wanna grab that in range boolean and set that as the check so the first check is are we in range of the treasure chest when we click the button so if we are in range of the treasure chest we're gonna go and do something specific right because we're already if we're in range of the treasure chest we obviously want it to spawn the loot um, if we're not in range of the treasure chest, we would want it to do something else. We want it to like say, okay, well, ha like basically in this sense, in this case, it says um, if we're not in range of the treasure chest, then um, we're going to set it. We're going to set a variable that says that we have clicked it, but we aren't there yet, right? And this is going to come in handy uh, later in a second. So that way, when we click on a chest it'll walk the character there to that location but it won't open the chest until you get there right so that's one of the main things we want to have um, so in order to set that up you start with that get your branch check to see if you're in range and then um, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do a check to see if you uh, have clicked it now the funny part is is that you have clicked it, clicked it obviously and the reason why you've clicked the widget now um, this is if you've clicked if you've s checked to uh, s the boolean is clicked right so is the boolean chest clicked set to true um, and so it's gonna say like um, let me see why did I do that though actually let me think about it for a second here um, so the way that I had it set up was this boolean here is kind of controls that and helps you be make it so that you can determine whether you're at the chest or not and, and whether it's supposed to drop the loot at the time or not um, but if you are in range is the chest clicked so if if the chest is uh, false if the chest is not clicked then you and you clicked it right and you did click it here s then it's saying set it to true that now you have clicked it so that's really all this part right here is um, that is just to check to say like did you click it and then yes okay set it or you know was it was it clicked before and if not then set it to clicked because we want to make sure that it knows that now it has been clicked for sure um, so in order in other words basically set up this little branch get your reference to your treasure chest again and you can also pull from here if you want to I just don't preferentially I, I um, preferably I don't do that because um, I like to kind of have mine separate but um, I used it down here so I said okay I'll just grab that and I'll just drag it up here and use it there um, because it was being checked in both places there regardless of whether you you know you we know you clicked it here but depending on whether you were in range or not we want to know um, and set it accordingly so I mean either way it's getting clicked um, and set to 
on. These are doing exactly the same thing, essentially. It's just that one is going to continue to have functionality afterward, and the other one is just stopping right here. So it doesn't continue to do anything. Um, and so once you get that done, you can set those up. And um, so now we're going to go into, if you were in range um, and you click the chest and you're ready, it's going to spawn the loot now. It says, yeah, you were in range, everything's good now, you c we can spawn loot for you, right? So um, this is a function that I made that, that's going to do all that. And, well, it's supposed to be a function. Why it's not showing up on my function list? Oh, that's right. It's a function from. It's a function that I'm getting from. Yeah, that's from the treasure chest. That's why it's not on here. So this is the treasure chest function. So again, you need to pull from that treasure chest reference that you had right there, and then get the um, the spawn item or whatever function uh, we're gonna make here in a second. So we're gonna go in and make this function. Now, um, let's see. So kind of going at this ass backwards because I could have had you set all this treasure shit up first but this is going to take a lot more time so um, essentially just for now let's just say that we don't set this up yet because this is going to take too much time and you just make a function right here plus function call it spawn item whatever you want to call it it doesn't have to do anything right now it doesn't really matter we just want it to be there so that we can call it and that way when it oh Jesus when it is um, you know, once it does get uh, uh, set up, it'll actually work, right? So make sure that that is in there right now. On your uh, treasure chest master or treasure chest uh, actor, right? Not on the widget, on the actor. And as soon as you get that done, you're going to go back to the widget, and now you can actually pull from there from the treasure chest reference and you can say um, you know spawn item whatever whatever you named it if you named it something different that's what it's gonna be and it'll pull that and we can you know run that oh my god and run that reference to it um, like that this thing is being a pain today um, so you're gonna set that up that's gonna start that'll be what's gonna spawn all the items uh, basically now Again, like I'm gonna go over that spawning function later, um, after we finish this. This is just to kind of get that widget out of the way, and once the widget's done, it's like then we can go to all the good functionality here. Um, so again, now now that you've spawned all the loot, you want to check and see has is you know is the treasure chest looted? Um, if it is true, uh, and this all happens late, like in the other thing, so. Um, you'll you'll it'll know basically because I'm we're gonna be setting this up this this boolean will be set up like in the treasure chest master uh, when you click on it or something um, and then some of this functionality might be a little bit messed up because um, it's happening in like two ways one way is you can click on the chest and the other way is you can click on the button of the menu so. Um, for example, I'll hit play and I'll show you. Um, the The reason why some of this is a little weird is because if you click on the chest, it's doing something different than if you click on the actual button right here. Um, so if I come down here and I click on this button, that button happens and it doesn't do anything because it's it's stupid because the functionality is a little weird and I need to fix that. But um, just know that if you click on the actual treasure chest it'll pretty much work every time uh, but when you click on the actual button here the button functionality is just a little stupid and it's because of the fact that it's it's going through checks and it's not actually like perfect and I haven't had time to make it perfect so I tend to just um, click on the actual chest for now until I can get that better and I know that kinda sucks but um, that's just gonna have to be the kind of the way it is right now, um, because I don't have time to to actually do it uh, and fix that. And there's also one other little issue that happens that I can go over later um, about the treasure. It, if it spawns off the screen, it it will cause a problem. 
uh, because it's trying to update its location and stuff so that's something that we'll go into later but back to what I was saying here um, we're gonna check to see if it's looted and so you're gonna pull your treasure chest reference again get the looted boolean that we have made earlier and we're going to branch that and say off the true um, if it has been looted we're gonna set the tooltip to uh, visible boolean to false now say because it was true initially it was true so get your treasure chest reference or pull it from here whatever you want to do um, and set that to false and then um, the last and final thing we do after click uh, if you were in range right if everything was good and it spawned the loot is remove the parent remove the widget from the parent I mean so I'll just delete that because that shows you that you know you can use it that way um, so now that this section is all kinda done that tells you you've got loot everything's good um, and you were it was successful now if you we're not in range of the treasure chest when you first clicked it we're gonna go back now and you clicked it you come here uh, were you in range false then we're basically like you said we're just setting this stuff up to sh show that you have clicked it sets it that you did click it to true um, and that's so that the treasure chest knows that yeah you clicked the button above it right you clicked the widget button it says yeah you click that button um, and so now when we go we can go into the treasure chest because everything else basically happens in the treasure chest now so the treasure chest knows we clicked it um, but we're not there yet we're not within range and so um, what we do is we go into the treasure chest go to the event graph and um, we're gonna get into what happens now when you click on that chest or that button I mean uh, from a distance um, and that is all going to happen right here, basically. Uh, but first, before I actually go into that here, let's go ahead and do the um, let's go ahead and do the the event. I mean, the uh, event begin play here, and just set that up because this will kind of give you give you all your um, initial stuff going on for the treasure chest. Um, it'll just this is just your your quick setup here. Um, move this up just a little bit so so again just as a backtrack we were leaving off at the widget with saying yes we clicked the button we're not at the chest yet we need the chest to do something when we get there and that is all taken care of in here we're gonna be doing that and covering that here in a minute uh, but I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna set up the uh, event begin play before we get to the overlap events. All right, so um, so onto the event begin play here. This is uh, basically a pretty simple thing. You want to cast your character. I tried to add these uh, uh, comments for some of this stuff, like on the spawn item. I didn't have time to add comments too much, just a few. But um, but same with like the treasure chest widget there's there's comments but it's not the greatest so this is um so we're gonna cast to the character this is gonna be whatever character name you have if you're using a different name of a character you're gonna be casting to that character and the f um, this right here you don't have to really worry about this is because I have a loading screen so in your case if you wanted to have a loading screen or you have a loading screen that's coming on or something you can check a boolean against that and say okay well delay you know if you want to um, but there's no you're, no, you're just going to be continuing on and acting as though this isn't here so you'll connect your character to the next part um, because you don't have the loading screen so um, next part is you want to go in and enable click, amount, click and mouse over events so you're going to get the controller um, and you're going to get uh, set enable click events to true, set um, enable mouse over events to true, and drag your blues over to the targets to set those um, as their source or their targets. Uh, once that is done, this is going to be like the initial treasure chest widget that comes up. This is what's creating it at the, on the event begin play when your treasure chest is created, right? 
So it comes over here, connects to the create widget, and you're going to click on um, the name of your treasure chest widget. If you named it something different, then you have to find that one. Um, and you can type it in, so whatever you name it, you know, treasure chest widget, that's, that's where it's going to be. Um, you don't have to connect anything to this, honestly. Uh, that's nothing. And so now we've created a widget, right? When the treasure chest is spawned, it's created the widget, and it's not really visible or anything, right? It's just it's 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 in existence. We know it's there, but it, you can't see it. And so uh, what happens then is a couple of different things. We're gonna actually move this forward a little bit here, because that doesn't happen yet. So after we create the widget, you want to right-click this return value and you're going to want to promote that to a variable right and that's going to be this and then you just name that variable treasure chest uh, UI reference or whatever you want to name it um, that's just a reference to your widget that way if you need it later you can access it um, and then uh, we're going to add it to the viewport so those two simple things right there just make a uh, Promote it to a variable, make a reference, and then and then add it to the viewport. Now, adding it to the viewport is going to put it on the screen, but it's not going to tell it where it needs to be, right? It just says, "Hey, I'm on the screen now. I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but I'm on the f I'm on the screen." So, in order to tell it where it needs to be, let me straighten these out here. Um, we have to do this setup here, and so we're going to Get, uh, grab the tick event. If you had the tick event down at the other end there, like way down here, then you can grab it and pull it over. Otherwise, uh, if it's not, you know, it's probably not going to be, it's probably going to be there, so you're going to have to drag it over here or delete it and just retype it. Um, so you're going to want to get the tick event and then you're going to want to stem off of that and do a gate and put the tick into the enter of the gate and you're going to get this uh, add to viewport. Uh, execution node and pull it over to open. Now on this one we want the tooltip visible boolean so we're gonna grab that control click drag over here connect that right that's how that works and then um, coming off of the gate it's just gonna be a set position in viewport so uh, position in viewport now if you type it in like that okay and you go, well, where the hell is it? I can't find it. I don't understand. Why the fuck can't I find it? That's because you have to type it off of the blue node coming from the widget. See? So you can make a couple reroutes. You can also just drag this out here. And um, you can connect it to the target right here. But what you want to do is first, you won't have it, right? So you're going to pull it out here where you want it. And then you're going to want to type uh, set position, position in viewport. And there it shows up now. So now you can set position in viewport, and that's when you can, uh, you know, double click on any of these things here. So, for example, if I wanted to re reroute those nodes nicely, you can double click on those, and you can make it look nice and do whatever you need to do. All right. So there's your position, uh, set position in viewport, and um, so you're going to have this this rerouting, rerouting to the target, right? And now, in order to set the position in the viewport, we need to get a couple things. First thing we need to get is the controller and the actor location. So grab the controller, the player controller, and get the actor location, and grab both of those. Then come in here, and you're going to make a project. Uh, what is it called? Project. Uh, let's just project a world location to widget position right so project world location to widget position and that's gonna look like this because it has a uh, vector 3 and then it has a player controller and you're just gonna connect those two you know to it like that and um, like that and once they're done these this is like your it's basically saying hey let's get to actor location and let's set it to the screen position, right? And we're gonna tell the um, widget we want that to be the where the um, position is for, of the widget, 
that's going to be on the screen space. Um, and so, in other words, we have our we have our thing here. We grab the pin, we connect that to position, we take the return value, and we re remove DPI scaling. Um, so those are set now, right? Okay. And you can comment these if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, just was trying to help comment so that it keeps it kind of organized and lets you guys see what these are actually doing. And then the very last thing that I have it set to do is um, honestly, like you do you? I don't know if you remember from the beginning, just right when we started here. But when you go to the uh, widget, there is the when I said, "Hey, make sure that this is hidden." Um, we're gonna come back and we're going to turn it to self hit test invisible or hit test. Inv it's got to be self hit test invisible, not hit test invisible. So self hit test invisible or visible. Either way, um, self hit test invisible is the way I have it set to be. Um, and I do a delay for 0.2 seconds. I doesn't. I don't think it really matters. You could. You don't have to do the delay if you don't want to. But essentially, what's happening is after you set the position. Um, oh, you know what? Huh, I just realized something. We're adding to the viewport, we're ticking, we're setting the position. We actually didn't want to... I don't think we wanted to do that on the tick, now that I think about it. I don't think I want the visibility to be set every tick. I just wanted the thing to set the position in the viewport every tick. But I can't test... I gotta test that, so I don't know if that... Well, maybe I did this for a reason, and that might be why. Um, in order to check that though, I'm gonna stem this with a sequence and just just to see. Come on. And we're gonna try going here with the open and there with the delay and remove that so that doesn't do that. And then I can see if this works. Cause I mean essentially we only want to set the visibility once. It shouldn't need to be set to visible a million fucking times, right? It's already once it's visible, it's visible. So let's check and see if that screws anything up. It should be setting the position of the chest. Yeah, it's it's working. They update. They update. They stay where they're supposed to stay. Um, they are kind of doing this little motion thing, which is weird. It has to do, I think, with the camera. But um, and they disappear when you click on the chest, right? So it saves probably a little bit of um, CPU not having to do the setting of the of the visible visibility every time. I don't know why I had it, I had that set like that. I just I must have missed that. Um, and so, in other words, that can be moved down to that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna rearrange this so that now the gate and the set position and viewport is there. The delay is actually gonna be off of something different. So let's let's just do let's just do that. Let's grab a sequence and let's take that, double click it so that the wires are nice and neat. And then let's grab that and go down with it. And then on this one, because it was nice and neat, now it's all screwed up. Shit. Okay, uh, let's just grab this and bring that up there. It looks so bad, right? So, let's compile that one more time. So yeah, so now when you add to viewport, let's do a sequence in there and let's put the sequence uh, zero to the open on the gate and then um, sequence uh, one goes to the set visibility. So that way it only sets the visibility one time because we don't need to keep doing that. But it does need to continue to set the position in the viewport because if you don't have this, what I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do this right here, okay? You're going to have a massive problem, right? What will happen is those menus will not stay on the chest. Oh, well, first of all, that's one problem that happens um, because I have another issue. But um, just don't do that. Make sure that this is set to be on the tick event with the gate and this tooltip visibility thing here, uh, boolean. Um, and so, okay, 
Moving on, that's the entire uh, event begin play. All of that can happen on the event begin play. If you want to make some of this functions to do this faster, well, not faster, but if you want to make it like uh, so it's not so cluttered on your on your event graph, you can you know you can make a function for certain things like change setting these, um, uh, you know, um, casting to the character that type of thing. Getting a reference can be done in a function or something. Um, you know, you can make it all less cluttered if you want to just do it with functions setting, basically like. This this right here could be a fun. This right here could be a function. You get that information, and then you have these two outputs that return, and then you could just call that function, and then just pop them right in. Um, that would make it, you know, a little bit less cluttered. It's all up to you. I just set it up this way because I was in a hurry and I didn't want to make a bunch of functions. Okay, so now let's go back to where we were earlier, and we're gonna do. Um, let's see, we're gonna go back into this widget here for a second. So this is where we were, right? We were we clicked on the chest, and we weren't there yet, right? We clicked on the button, not the chest. We clicked on the button. It came through and said, "Yeah, we we are not in range. We need to walk there first." So what happens is, on your treasure chest uh, actor, we're going to set up two things we're going to have on component begin overlap of the trigger box which we set up on the first video trigger box this trigger box right here so in order to get that um, you want to go over to your trigger box right here right click add event and then hit on component begin overlap right mine is not here because mine is already on the graph if I delete that and I go here add event on component begin overlap. It'll show up again and then it'll put it down here and I have to remove it, re remake it and um, reset it up here. And then we just go here and we connect it and say, okay, done. Right? We're not using any of this stuff here. Uh, we just wanted to, to know that when we overlap it, um, then um, on an overlap, basically, it's going to set these uh, uh, now the thing is is that actually eventually you probably would want to say well I want to check that the other actor is player right because you don't want something like if you had a, an item in the world um, and it was bouncing around and, and it came in contact with this trigger box you don't want it to just start doing all this shit right because it's not the player so you would want to check to see that the player that this actor equals player before you um, before you or uh, is of class you know, your player's BP or something like that before uh, before you have it do and run the functionality. Um, but for now, whatever. Right? This is just a this is just a simple setup. You can always add more functionality um, in your um, in your blueprint later. But this would be like so is equal to right, and then you could say um, what is it right? I if it's your player's mesh, you know. And if if you wanted to say player mesh, you could say mesh, um, and grab. Let's see what do they have? They have those ones. Maybe they don't call it that. Q mesh. I don't think they call it mesh 2P for the player on this one. It's probably something else. It's not player. I know that. Um, let's go through the list here. body I think it's one of these those are materials but I think it's gonna be some kind of like uh, where is it okay there's the skeleton we don't want the skeleton though third person animations and where did it go maybe it's not in here maybe they call it some maybe it's just the skeleton mesh I'd have to go to the controller. I don't. It's okay. It's not a big deal. You could even just go. Um, you could just do this. You could say git class, and then you can check to see if it's of class equal to. Um, uh, and then you can say your player, right? So uh, top down character BP. So if it's of type top down BP, then you can branch and then you can set that in there and check that first 
So then it won't do it unless if it's uh, if it's being uh, overlapped by the top-down character BP, char uh, some kind of you know actor that has is of that class. So we overlapped, and we so okay. We've clicked the box, right? We clicked the check box, or we clicked the uh, widget uh, button on the on the chest, but we're not in range of it. So we're here at this point, and we need to um, when we get to the overlap. So it's on its the character's on its way there, right? The character's on its way to the treasure chest, and so when it uh, reaches that tr that uh, overlap box, the first thing we need to do is check to see if it's in range, or no, sorry, set it set that it is in range, right? So um, where was it? Because uh, before it wasn't, right? Before it wasn't in range, obviously, and that's why we went this direction. So that's why when we get there, the first thing we do is set to check to see, set it that it is in range. And then I always do a print string just to check to make sure when, when things are happening for now. Um, you can always check those off so that they don't show on the screen later if you just want them to be on the debug log or whatever. Um, but that kind of helps with making sure things are happening when they're supposed to. And then, um, so this is checking to see if the chest is clicked. And when we were in the widget, uh, that's what it does. See, it sets that boolean to true because you were clicking it. You clicked the button and it came through and said, no, you're not there yet. So um, we need to go there still. We're not in range, so we can't spawn the items yet. We need to go there still, but let's set it and say that yes, we did click the object, right? We clicked it, so when we get there, we can say that yes, it was clicked. So when it gets to this uh, check, it's going to go, yeah, oh, yep, yep, it was true. It definitely was true. Uh, false, we probably want to have something that print um, string, just because this is good to have as functionality. You know, you could say like, well, um, you could say, um, button widget button and then if anything happens widget button was not clicked and then um, if anything happens to where this like fails for some reason th even though you know you click the button like then it'll pop out this and say okay yeah something happened so then you can say okay well why didn't it click the button I thought I clicked it like I know I was on top of it or whatever clicking the button and then it can come back to the widget having an issue with something's visibility in here again saying like maybe something was blocking it maybe the chest text here was set to visible and that could have been blocking it so it didn't do it um, that type of thing but then again that's not even necessarily true because if you didn't click the button on the widget if the button wasn't accessible it wouldn't even run this functionality anyway so it's but it's still I always like to have that extra assurance that something's going to tell me when something's wrong. So we've checked, we've we've set it to say we're in range, we've um, checked to see if it was clicked, and yes it was clicked because we set it in the widget, right? And then now we're going to spawn the loot now because we actually are now in range. We've gotten there, it's checked all its checks, we're going to spawn the loot. Now that's just basically spawning that function again. We haven't set it up yet, we have this you know, you have you have this the uh, the um, function named, but you don't have anything in it yet, and we'll do that last. So you'll just drag out, grab your function, or just drag and drop it, whatever from here, and control click drag, and it'll put it there, and you can set it up. So there you go, and um, and so once that's done, like okay, we've spawned all the items. We're gonna do the same kind of checks again. We're gonna check to see is it is it looted. Um, and this ha that actually happens in here. Looted happens inside the spawn, so we're we're you don't have to worry about that yet. We're gonna it'll just just know that this is actually doing something, <laughs> um, and it's doing something in there. So so once it's spawned items, it can check and say, oh yes, it was looted. And again, if you want to put a print string, I mean, if it ever gets here, and for some reason doesn't and if this ever could fail because there's no reason why it should ever fail if you go through this functionality the first thing that happens is it sets itself to looted so like it'll never fail right here it can never fail right here but for some stupid reason it might I don't know there's always some kind of anomaly so 
you can always have a print string that tells you, yeah, the loot loot is not, you know, is not true. Loot is false or something like looted is false. And then that way you can always figure out what's going on um, if something is not working right. So it's checked that. It says, yeah, it's looted. Okay, then we want to set the tooltip visible to false. And that's going to tell the gate that we have on the um, up here, right? Oh, it was true, right? Oh, you've looted it, so now it should be false, which means do not continue to do this anymore. And that's the only thing I don't like about this is that there is a tick event here that's running this, which is kind of bad. But it, right now, it's the only way to get it to work. But it's like, even once this is false, it's just not going to be doing this anymore. It's just going to continue to tick into this gate, though, and do nothing, basically, which kind of bugs me. So I want to um, put a check in front of that or something. I don't know. Probably, if tooltip is visible, um, if tooltip is visible, right, then... I could put a gate. I could probably do a branch that says if this is visible, or if it's true, then continue to do this part. And if not, then don't bother doing this. Then it's not going to run the tick after the chest has been clicked. Um, but uh, for now, I'm not going to mess with it. So, so yeah. So here we are. We've set that to false. It tells the gate to shut off and stop showing the 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 tool the tooltip that says its name. We're going to remove it from the parent, and, um, well, it's, what's weird is, you remove it from the parent, and it's still going to be sitting here running this tick into the gate. So, um, anyway, yeah, we remove the, the treasure chest widget from the parent, and the treasure chest widget is the UI reference, so that's from here. So we wanted to grab that reference that we made, and drag it out here, right? And that's what you connect to the parent, right there, remove from parent. So that's how you set that up. Um, so now it's basically like, okay, both both ways now. You can click the chest when you're in range, and it'll spawn loot. You can click the chest from from a distance, and it'll walk there, and it'll open as soon as you get inside that trigger box, and it'll open the uh, chest and spawn loot. And so now the only thing left to do on the chest is to set up um, a couple of things. One is on the end of the overlap. So if you if you are not, you know, if you're already in range of the object and you're overlapping it right now and you're standing there next to the chest and you walk away from it, we want to make sure that we set it to be uh, not in range. So tell it the in range of a, a boolean needs to be false just so that you know like hey I'm not in range of that chest anymore you know and if anything needs to happen um, because of that then you can always put that functionality extend it off of here whatever um, so the last is setting up the click for the actual mesh which is this here so I had to go add event and on clicked which isn't going to be here but again if I wanted to do on clicked um, it would be there like that, add on clicked. So on an item that's already got it down on the on the uh, graph, it's not going to show on the list. But there's on released, right? So it'll be right above on released, and it'll sh say it there. You want to click that, bring it here, and and then um, this is basically when you click that mesh, right? So when you click the treasure chest mesh, you want it to do the same exact thing, right? It has to do all the same exact stuff, because uh, essentially it's like one of the uh, one of the ideas was I wanted it to work with the button press on the widget, but I also wanted it to work with when you just touch uh, touch the chest. The other thing is is that um, if you don't want the button press to actually do anything, which is perfectly fine, um, it's actually almost more optimal if you don't have it do anything. If you just completely set the button, all this stuff to hit test invisible, right? Well, sorry. Let's just do the button. We set the button to. Uh, we set this to um, self hit test invisible, right? So now it will not retrieve any uh, clicks. So if we click that chest, it's going to get there, but it's not going to actually do anything because um, the this is still set to uh, visible and things like that. So it's still blocking. But if we set this to hit test invisible. 
um, all we're going to do basically is now it's going to say, okay, well now that button, that, that button is literally just a nameplate. There's nothing there. It's not blocking. It's not doing anything, but it should work. But it doesn't, of course, because something's in the way. What is causing that? Hit test invisible should be 100%. Well, let's set it all to hit test invisible. Um, and essentially what happens is it should not allow you to... Oh, that's right. I didn't really have to do that. I could have set this right here. So where is it? Uh, the widget. Widget is focusable. We don't want the button to be focusable. We don't want the button to be focusable because um, essentially what happens is that blocks I think that blocks the yeah so if you do that you can click right through it and you'll never have to worry about it because essentially all you're doing at this point is clicking the chest you're not actually clicking the button you're not clicking the widget the widget is invisible to the mouse completely 100 percent you're clicking right through it and you're clicking the chest that kind of fixes things uh, but the only thing is is that when you do it that way um, and you want the mouse to recognize the widget and hover do hover changes and things like that if you want the the if you want the button to like change colors when you hover over it like with the mouse here as it kind of like the way this one is it won't work because the button is completely invisible to the mouse the mouse doesn't even see it um, and so right now I've got really bad frame rates I don't know if it's because I'm recording but um so it kind of is like a trade off it depends on how you want to set it up like this allows you to set it up one way just when you click the chest uh the mesh and not the button which is nice because then it works no matter what it doesn't matter if you click through you know through the button or whatever um but again like you're you're losing that ability to set uh these these hover text colors see like that one turns gray when when I go behind, when I go over it, these turn kind of grayish, which means like you're hovered over it, right? And it kind of um, is nice to have those. So that's why that's why I set the button to focusable, so that way it can be focused. Um, it is going to be visible, and I'm just going to say I'm going to set all this to hit test invisible, just so that way that stuff doesn't do it. But again now that the button's visible I can't click through it and have it operate the chest because it's clicking the button right it's saying hey I'm clicked like you'll never be able to click through that and so um, but it would allow you to do those hover changes see now they turn gray when you hover over them um, so again it's like this big trade-off I don't know you can kind of play around with it more um, so we're on the mesh now. We want to click the mesh. We're going to do the same exact things, right? Sorry for all my rambling on about certain things. So again, we're checking. Are we in range, right? It's the first thing we're going to check. Um, and then, is the chest clicked? Did you click it? Well, um, if that's false, then set that to true. Because if you clicked um, the button, but you didn't click the chest, this is where my functionality might be a little weird, but if you click the button, so if you click the button and then you click the chest, you're going to have it saying that you already clicked the, um, oh, that's exactly what the problem is. So this needs to actually have something. So that if you click the button first and it sets chest click to true, then what needs to happen is it needs to go and say that um, it needs to actually do something. Let me see if I can finish this up. Because when you click the button on on the thing and you're not in range, if you click the button and you're not in range, it's still going to set the chest thing to clicked to true. And so this actually needs to. Uh, it's already set to true, and so it needs to go into the trigger mode, which would be up here. It needs to run through this and say when you get in range. Um, uh, because, okay, so, let's see, if we're in range, and, yeah, we're in range, we, if 
if we clicked the button and we had this set to true already and then we clicked the chest and we get to the chest it should essentially Let's see what happens when we do that so if we click the button if we click the button then we pull back we essentially shouldn't it should be set to true okay so it is it works never mind it works already okay so because it's set to true but what's weird is when you click on the chest is it in range oh because it's coming down here and saying okay it's it's um no, that's so fucking weird because if you click the button after you've already set this to true and it says you're you're not in range it should come down and say yeah well you click the button it was true and it should do nothing right but it doesn't do nothing it continues to do stuff because of the fact that the the um okay well print strings yep set that true it works right now though so we'll just go with it for now, and if I ever find out something different, I can always update it. Um, let's see. So, so yeah, so basically we're going to check to see if it's range. We're going to check to see if the chest is clicked. We're going to go off of the false from there, and we're going to set that chest clicked to true, because now you've clicked it. Even if, if you didn't, if, you, if it wasn't, you know, if it was, wasn't clicked, then now it is definitely. Um, and then we're going to spawn items, which is just that function again. So pull that function once more, put it right here, and we'll, we'll again we'll fill that function out in a minute. Um, and then we're going to you know say is it looted? Uh, if it's true, then um, we're going to do the same exact thing again. We're just going to set tooltip visible to false, and we're going to remove from parent with this treasure chest UI reference once more. So grab that. So this is all like essentially the same stuff that's up here. This is just a copy and paste almost. Like set in range, in range, right? Chest clicked, spawn items, um, looted, and that. So those you can almost drag and drop pretty much and copy them down. The only difference is that you have to set this one to clicked, uh, set this click to true, and on this one you don't do that. Um, which is kind of weird actually maybe because it's probably because I already did it in the button so but I can always add that I could always go okay well if you if it was false if it was false uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do it right now actually screw that so um, so yeah again that's all that basic same stuff and then in the false it's almost exactly the same again as this uh, that one doesn't have anything, but in this one you want to say this chest clicked. You're, che you're checking if the chest was clicked, and you're setting f the false. If it wasn't, if it was not clicked before that, before you touched the chest uh, mesh, um, then you want to make sure that you set it to false, and um, and then, or sorry, pff, set it to false. If it was false, if this was false then you want to set it to true. So that way it knows that, yeah, you clicked it, regardless of whether or not you were in range, you did click it. Um, this one here, we may want to add that. I don't remember why it's... It could be... I don't know. It seems... To, functionality seems to work for the most part. Like, I don't usually have any issues of whatever. But there might be a couple things that I need to adjust. But now that you kind of have all of the functionality, we have the uh, event begin play is done we have the overlap event on begin and overlap on end and then we have the on click for the mesh um, so now the only thing that's left is to set up the spawn item uh, function and I'm pretty sure I'm at an hour already so yeah um, this is going to take a little bit of time and I am going to try to include it in this video I think but I don't know I think I'm going to make a separate video, so I'm just going to do that as a separate video, and I will stop this one right now and restart that video here in a second. Alright, so I'll catch you guys right here on the next one, and it's going to be all about the spawn item function right here. So it's going to be setting this up here. Um, 
So when you get into this video, that next video, uh, we're going to be literally just going into your spawn item and setting it up here. So let me uh, see you guys here in the next one.